Okay, I'm interested um, in the fact that the School Health Research Network has been developed by Decipher. Um, can you tell me about the work you do at the Research Centre and how this links to the network? Sure. Um, well, Decipher is one of the five UK CRC public health centres of research excellence and we focus particularly on children and young people's well-being. Um, there's particular challenges in, in our area about um, generate an evidence base for what works really. Mm. So we're interested in developing and evaluating complex interventions. Now part of that work um, involves working with partners uh, in practice and policy makers uh, and the public and SHERN really is a, a, a natural extension of that. It's a, it's a sort of network which help us to link to all our key s stakeholders to work with us to identify the sorts of interventions that should be developed uh, to help us facilitate research studies so that we can generate evidence and then to work in partnership to get that evidence into, into practice. I can see clear links um, with the School Health Research Network and my own work as a Healthy Schools Coordinator. How do you see the network sitting within the Welsh network of Healthy Schools? Well, it's, it's, you know, it's very much a, a, a partnership because both uh, are concerned with the same thing, ultimately, mm. which is to improve the health and well-being of, of, of children and young people. Um, we uh, started off the, the network in, in partnership with Public Health Wales and some mm. other key groups in Welsh Government, Cancer Research UK, ESTIN, um, and we're now talking about developing governance structures which really link our, our two organisations. Um, and, I, and I think we can do a lot of things sort of together, and I think part of that might relate to really identifying the health needs of, of, of schools, both uh, pupils and teachers and at the, at the school level and that can then uh, help to inform the health planning uh, at the school level, at the regional level, at the, yeah. the, the, the national level, uh, that we can work together to identify sort of evidence gaps or if there's sort of local innovation going on that we can work with you to, to help to evaluate that. And then once we've got that evidence, again, we can sort of work together to, to develop you know, more evidence-based practice. So, mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to see them become sort of indispensable to each other, yeah. really. Yeah. The, the health behaviour in, in school-aged children that survey mm. is a really valuable um, source of comparable information at, at a national level over time. But how have you made this relevant at a school level? Mm. And, and what do you see the potential at a local authority or scheme level? Yeah. Well, because we were doing a pilot this year, we were sort of testing out some of the, the sort of processes involved in the, in the School Health Research mm. Network. We used the HBSC um, survey as an opportunity to collect data in our initial pilot schools. Um, we, we used that data to provide the schools with like a tailored health profile. So on all the sort of major health outcomes associated with their pupils, be it their sort of mental health and well-being, uh, experiences of bullying, smoking, sort of alcohol use, uh, diet, physical activity. We were able to sort of tell each school what their school population looked like and then we benchmarked it against what the national average were. So they could see where they were doing really well uh, and where they had some sort of distance to uh, travel. Within that report, we also let them have information on um, sort of policy and, and, and practice that could be recommended to address some of those sort of issues and also links to various support services including Public Health Wales where they could seek further um, support and, and guidance so um, you know the feedback we've had it seems like the schools really really appreciate those reports and, and in terms of how we'd hope they mm. would use them um, I, I think many of the schools have been using them with all the different communities within the schools, so they've, often they've set up um, school health action groups and that would involve teachers, uh, pupils, sometimes parents and then they look at the report and they would decide on what the most important health issues were to them and then decide how they were going to address them. Mm. Um, 
the good thing about that is that uh, by repeating that sort of survey biannually, they'll be then able to see what progress they've made you know, in terms of their actions. Um, and I think our next step is to try and draw the schools together to share examples of good practice so that uh, schools learn from each other about how the best way to use the report. With an emphasis in, in public health on moving upstream, mm. why did you choose to focus on secondary schools? Slightly <laughs> pragmatic uh, in, in the sense that because we had a partnership with, with Welsh Government uh, in this pilot, they were conducting their health behaviour in school children survey within secondary schools. So we, we linked the launch of the network to that, that opportunity. Um, so that's the, 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 the simple answer. It was probably <laughs> lower hanging fruit to go, go in and do that. And in, in many ways, there's, it, it's a lot easier to research with um, sort of old, older uh, children and, and young people. Uh, the measures are a little bit more valid and reliable. Um, they're more cognitively able to, to fill in questionnaires and, 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 and responses. Um, that's not to say that there are sort of key uh, sort of health issues for that particular group. So, you know, in particular substance misuse and the onset of alcohol use, the potential for onset of smoking behaviours, those are all key for, for that age group. Uh, one particular issue which has come out for us with this sort of round of sort of feedback reports is issues of uh, mental health and self-harm and, 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 and suicide behaviour. And one of our network events that we, we ran for schools was, was particularly well subscribed by schools because they wanted to look at that issue. Mm -hmm. um, saying that, our, our, our next ambition is to move into primary schools um, to launch the network there. Um, and there'll be particular challenges of how, how you ask younger children things about their health behaviour. It's likely that they'll, they'll, they'll focus on sort of more diet and physical activity issues which are, um, are more pertinent to that, uh, that age. It, it is a time of great challenge for schools. Mm. Why do you feel they should make health and wellbeing a priority and, and how can the network better engage or help mm. us to engage with schools that are harder to reach for mm. healthy school staff? Yeah. I mean, it, it is always a, a, a challenge of, to get schools to take health seriously because a lot of the key drivers are around sort of e educational attainment mm -hmm. um, and all the league tables are, are, are around that. Um, I think Wales, we're particularly lucky when, when you look across other parts of the UK because we've got a, a context which supports the importance of health now whether that's to do with the fact that health and well-being uh, uh, is one of the criteria that Estin look at in their in inspection, or the recent Donaldson review of the curriculum, which emphasised that health and well-being as being a key part of that, and the fact that we have a public health infrastructure, uh, a national infrastructure, which helps to deliver a healthy uh, school scheme. All those things are, you know, are largely absent in England. So it's, mm. it, you know, we're, we're ahead of the game, I think, in terms of health and education. Um, I think it's up to us to sort of demonstrate the, the, the value of, of, of health to school. And one of the things the network is going to be able to do is to link health activities to longer term educational outcomes through our sort of data linkage programme. Um, and I think once you've got good evidence which shows that there is a potential relationship between having a healthy child in school and a healthy school environment and educational performance, then I think you know, that we've made the argument and you're more likely to get um, the, the harder to reach schools yeah. on, on, on board. I, I've got one of the reports here, or the, the types of reports that, that schools receive, um, and on page three mm. there's a caveat highlighting that where um, fewer than six responses were made, it says mm. important, I've got a quote here, to treat these data with caution. Mm. Explain to a non-academic like myself, yeah. what, what was the basis for that cutoff? Why not treat numbers like seven, eight and nine with the same degree of caution? Yeah. And, and how do you hope to ensure future numbers will be greater? Yeah, I think that, um, that caveat was largely a function of the, the sort of pilot nature mm. of what, what we're doing in the network this, this year because we were using the HBSC and that, um, that essentially um, only questions two classes per school 
Um, now, the reason we, we, we put that sort of health warning on, on, on the six um, mm. is that we didn't want to report any numbers lower than that because of um, potential problems around anonymity, because once you go down beyond that, I mean, looking at other surveys, right. it's an approach mm. they've used. Potentially, um, teachers might be able to identify uh, you know, the two people in year eight or whatever that were smokers and things. So um, it's something that we won't encounter in the future because from our study this year with the network, all the schools want as much data as they can have about their whole school population. So we've um, piloted electronic data collection um, this, this year as well. Um, so biannually, the hope is that schools will be surveying the whole school population so they'll be able to understand right, yeah. the health profile of every single year mm -hmm. and it'll be on, on, on everyone within it. Um, I was a bit worried that you know, schools might see it as, as a burden and would not want to do it. But you know, it's on the contrary, they, they want as much data as possible for their, for their school health profile. So how can schools be confident that the data they receive will mm. be robust, reliable, yeah. and accurate? Yeah. I mean, all the measures we've been using are based on the Health Behaviour in School mm -hmm. Children uh, survey. And that's, uh, I think it's about 30 years old, uh, you know, coming up for the, for the next round. So there's a long tradition of, of developing up these sort of measures. There are particular cross-national uh, research groups that get together and look at the sort of theoretical basis and uh, do validation um, and reliability tests. So although all our measures are, are self-report, a lot of those measures then have been um, validated against subjective measures. So like, you know, ch uh, children are reporting that they're smoking that those measures would have been checked against some objective measure to test at some point. Mm -hmm. um, we also follow the protocols for data collection, um, for sampling, um, so that there's a certain way that you, you choose the, the, the sample which is comparable across all the, the countries in, in the, in the um, study. Um, and there's also a protocol in terms of data cleaning to making sure mm -hmm. that you do consistency checks, that if somebody says that they you know, do something in one question and they say they don't in another <laughs> question, then we, we, we look mm. at that, that, that respondent to look at whether there's a pattern there and potentially exclude the, the, the data. I mean, one of the difficulties is traditionally um, measures haven't been um, validated, they're not reliable mm. and they're not comparable. So, mm. you know, a, a, across the country, often uh, each area or each school might be doing their own health monitoring but you can't sort of put that data together. So this is the advantage right. of the network. Mm. We can understand what's going on at a national, uh, a regional and a local level. I mean, we work in a climate that is data driven. Mm. Do you believe in the adage, what gets measured gets done? And if you do, yeah. how would you like to see schools using these reports? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's right, and I think it's it's mm. becoming even more of an issue with mm. uh, the reduced resources and, and, and having to sort of um, make decisions uh, ab about where those resources are. I think if we're able to provide evidence which, which shows some effect through um, both evaluation studies, but also long-term sort of monitoring mm. uh, of data, of, of program implementation, all those things are, I think are, are useful for um, securing resources for, for uh, a programme of work that you know, I, you know, is, is an important one. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think particularly, as I said, the, the linking of health and attainment data, I think it's going to be the key one because that will open up a, a, you know, a lot of doors uh, in, in sort of securing or maintaining resources of investment. How, how schools should use them? I think, you know, it's, uh, I think <laughs> probably the, 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 the health action groups are, you know, mm. is a good way forward yeah. in doing that. Um, ultimately, um, they, you know, they should use them in, in the best way they, they, they see fit. I, I, there should be some sort of flexibility around it. I mean, we've got an event um, coming up late, later in the year where we're pulling together um, all the different schools so they can share that practice. Right. One of the ideas is that the, mm. the sort of partner schools in particular areas might work together um, to 
identify particular ways that seem to work for them. And, and how would you hope that the setting up of the network will impact on school health research? I think if I, I suppose if I had to sum it up, mm. it, would, it would be that um, schools felt that they were being researched with rather than, than on. Um, it, you know, it's very much a sort of partnership with uh, schools and with, with, with local authorities and, and, and Public Health Wales so that we're together setting the, the research agenda so that you know, the, the, the best research questions are not the ones that are dreamt up purely by academics, mm. they're the ones that are dreamt up uh, in collaboration yeah. with uh, the, the, you know, the, 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 the very people that the research affects, so the young people themselves, mm. Uh, mm. the teachers themselves, the parents. Um, so we get better research questions and then we also get better interventions because, again, similar thing. Yes, if academics yes. are dreaming mm. them up, they're not going to fly when you get to the, the, the chalk face. Mm. But if we're doing it through collaboration, they're more likely to be effective, they're more likely to mm. be sustainable. Then if we work together to sort of facilitate the research studies within the network, at the end of the day, then you've got good quality evidence that's much more likely to be implemented within practice. So it's, it's I suppose, it's a real cycle mm. of knowledge exchange and collaboration right from the very start of what the research question is, getting into the, um, the implementation of the evidence. I mean, the good thing is it's a constant cycle, so you keep going around it, yeah. so there's always something to do. All right, uh, my last question is around the future and, and how you, would you like to see the network develop over the next five years? Mm. I think, I suppose the, the ideal behind it is, is, is having something like uh, clinical research networks mm. and evidence-based medicine and I know that often doesn't happen in the way that it, it's supposed to mm. but it's a, it's a model that I would, I'd like to sort of see within schools so that um, you, you would have more research practitioners, so people that understood evidence that could apply it to practice, uh, that you would have research specialist schools that could be mm -hmm. areas of uh, innovation and piloting of innovation, um, that research and evaluation become an integral part of, of every day's practice, really. Um, and I, you know, I suppose that's a whole big cultural change, so you know, it's going to take a little, a little while, but I think within Wales, we've got the conf context, we've got the partnership and the infrastructure that you know really can can make that happen. So it's really exciting times, I think, for the future of the network. I think so. Thank you, Simon. Thanks for talking to me. Thank Thanks you very, very much. much. Thank you.